Okay, we're going to give uh, Ted Dabney a call uh, right now. Ted, if you're not familiar, is the co-founder of Atari with Nolan Bushnell. Uh, this is his first time uh, speaking in a public forum like this, uh, so very honored to get him. Uh, if you're not as familiar with him, it's because he was with the Atari in the very early years, uh, through the very early 70s, before he was actually forced out of the company by Nolan. Uh, so he has some interesting stories to tell about that and the creation of the very first uh, point out video game, Computer Space. And uh, he was there through the creation of Pong and uh, a lot of the uh, good uh, early games. So we'll give him a try right now. try to turn you around a second so you can actually see the audience, okay? Just give me okay. a second. Okay. Let me thank you so much for doing this for us. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. You know, I think we lost your audio. Can you say something again? What's that? Okay. Uh, we're not getting any audio from you. Why don't we hang up and just try connecting again? Okay. Oh, there. Yeah, now we got you. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you could, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about your background pre-Nolan uh, pre uh, so that they know uh, what type of uh, industry background you had. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I learned electronics when I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, after the other Marine Corps, I got a job at Bank of America in uh, the research department and that didn't last too long because Bank of America is not a really good place to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, a friend of mine uh, that I worked with it, there had a job, job as uh, Hewlett Packard and so I thought well I'll give Hewlett Packard a job. But in the meantime I interviewed at Lenkirk and they gave me a very extensive hands-on test, which I failed. But the test was on uh, uh, RC oscillators. When I got over to Hewlett Packard, I aced the test. Because <laughs> their test was on RC oscillators. <laughs> but uh, anyway, my friend had subsequently gone to work for Ampex. And after I paid a Hewlett Packard for about six weeks and had two promotions and a raise, <laughs> uh, they did, uh, my friend decided I should go to work for Apex. So uh, I went over the interview. They offered me an engineering job. I figured off the tech bench into an engineering position couldn't hurt. <laughs> you can take them three months to get wise to me. So <laughs> go. And that's it. I wound up in Ampex and then uh, worked there for about 10 years. And about uh, eight years into it, when I was with video class, uh, I met Noah. And he had all these hair-bringing ideas. And he used to know my, you know, we, we shared an office, so we played Go and uh, told a lot of lies to each other and that kind of stuff. And uh, so we, we he got this idea about 
John Pizza Parlor with talking barrels and singing bears and all this kind of stuff. I go pretty silly. But he, he, he was a good salesman. So, you know, I said, hey, we'll go. So we started working on that. And uh, in the meantime, he had seen this uh, computer game over at Stanford Research Center. Or was Stanford? Yeah, I don't know if it was Research Center or not. But uh, at Stanford, and he saw these uh, rocket ships and stuff and that kind of thing. He said, hey, we got to do that. We can get a small computer and timeshare with monitors and put coin slots on So we did, so we decided we were going to do that, but we didn't know anything about software, we didn't know anything about computers. So we got Larry Bryan, who was a high shot programmer, at least that's what we thought, and um, we formed a company, <laughs> formed a company called Synergy. And uh, that was Larry Bryan. Came up with that name. He found that in a dictionary someplace and thought it was really neat. And he looked it up and said, "Yeah, okay, we'll use that name." Uh, so uh, time went on. He kept looking, and Larry couldn't come up with anything, and we couldn't afford to buy a computer anyway. So fizzled out. And then uh, so no one asked me one time, "Why does?" Uh, when you did a vertical control on a TV set, the picture starts moving you know, one way or the other. And I said, try explaining to him why that happened. He says, could we, could we do that? I said, yeah, but we'd have to do it digitally because we couldn't do it analog. You would have no control. Or you wouldn't have, you know, very good control. Well, anyway, I read where this thing up with little uh, uh, counters. And it worked. And my neighbors would come over and look at that and say, oh, well, that's really neat. You know, I mean, they didn't even know what they were looking at. But uh, uh, I said, yeah, this is going to be a video game or something. And uh, so uh, that's kind of, and once I got that working, no one realized, you know, uh, but we could do that horizontally and vertically and all that, so we read one of the thing up and I got it working and then no one sold it to Netting Associates. And that's where the computer space was created. Now, uh, so that's... Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, that's well, you said up to where I met Nolan and that was kind of it. <laughs> That's no problem. So yeah, so you're just, when uh, did most of that design work take place with the spot motion circuitry you were describing and some of the other circuitry? Oh, God. I, know, I had to be late 69, early 70, you know, something, something in that order. Uh, it, it could have been a little later than that. I just don't remember. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, no problem. But, yeah, I remember much. <laughs> Well, I, I know one I thing. I can't personally find that to set necessity, but that's about all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know one part that no one didn't remember quite right that you remember quite well was that it was actually the design was in your daughter's bedroom that you converted over. I know he had previously. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Uh, he was married to Paula at the time, and Paula was not excited about all this crap anyway. So she <laughs> wouldn't let him uh, do any of that stuff at, at the house. You know, and, and that was fine. He spent a lot of time at my house, you know, uh, working on that. So maybe he thought my house was his. <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, so he basically sold it to uh, Nutting, and then went over there, and then you joined him. So he didn't sell it to Nutting. He didn't he, sell it to. He me. sold the idea to okay. Nutting. Okay. No, well, we owned it. We. All the rights to it, you know, the, that's where all the documentation said, we own the game, we own the idea, we own that. And when, after we finish doing the game for Nutting, it will be Nutting's game, but they have to pay us a royalty. Oh, okay. And that's, yeah. So he went ahead to Nutting, uh, I'm assuming as their lead engineer, uh, I believe he installed himself as, and then uh, finished the design? Yes, yes. And then you yeah, in the meantime, go ahead. 
Yeah, in the meantime, I started working in Ampex, the Rancho Board and helped me in the evening. And uh, we decided we were going to have to have a cabbie because he's working on this thing. And uh, uh, I thought he was doing a pretty good job. I guess it turned out that Steve Briscoe did all the work. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, I came to over. I finally quit my job at Ampex after 10 years. I hated to do that, but we got an idea that might work. So I came over to betting and started working in the shop building the cabin. Now you mm -hmm. you built the first couple of uh, test cabinets, I remember you telling me, for the uh, computer space? No, oh. it's, just, it's just one cabinet. We just wanted to put, to put this thing that no one was uh, building to put it in there so we could actually see what it looked like. You know, and I, I uh, found uh, somebody that had a uh, TV set that they wanted to sell for thirty-five dollars so I bought that, cut it apart and turned it into a monitor. <laughs> and I stuck that at the cabinet. And that's, where we, that's kind of where we started. So how long were you guys with nutting before you broke off on completely on your own then? Oh, I would say probably six or eight months, something like that. The, uh, what, what happened is uh, all of a sudden, you know, this thing came together pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, also no one got this fiberglass cabinet that you're well aware of. And, uh, uh, you know, then we started production. And as soon as we started production, we started getting royalties. Uh, and we were also getting a paycheck. Right? But, uh, uh, no one tried to negotiate with men. No, no one wanted uh, some ownership in the company. And um, nothing wouldn't have anything to do with it. So no, some, then he started contacting other uh, game manufacturers and see if somebody would be interested. Well, it turned out Bally was interested. But they said as long as we were playing, they wouldn't really talk to us because they you know, couldn't do that. So we quit nutting. We were getting some royalties. We had, uh, Bill Nutting wasn't a real smart guy, and uh, this salesman all of a sudden, you know, this salesman was a stupid salesman. He kept the nutting alive for years on this old computer quiz game. It was an old game, but he kept selling them and selling them and selling them and keeping the company alive. All of a sudden, computer space comes along, and now he just went in the money. Well, Bill Nutting saw how much money he was making, he fired him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, I, I don't remember his name, and I really apologize for that, but I, I don't. Ralston, I think, was his name. But anyway, he had uh, a lot of, you know, pool table and a lot of other stuff out in Santa Fe Valley, and so Nolan and I bought that from him. And uh, so we had income from that. Nolan and I were living off the quarters, and uh, we had the royalties, and we figured, okay, start our own company. And that's when we, uh, you know, went off on our own. And that's when we, then as soon as we were on our own, Bally uh, came along and offered us, uh, $4,000 a month for six months if we would design a video game for them and a pinball machine. So that's kind of what happened. As soon as we got that contract, we thought we could idea to incorporate. And uh, so we... Yeah, we lost you there. Are you still there? All right, I'm going to try and reconnect with them in a second.
Looks like Ted's having computer problems. Uh, unfortunately, he's on a satellite uh, connection. Uh, we'll try a couple minutes. Try and get him. Otherwise, we will move on to Michael Katz, who's also ready to talk. And then we'll try and get Ted again. to Michael Katz then. Uh, Michael Katz, uh, we'll, go, we'll try and go back to Ted after Michael. Uh, Michael Katz has basically started his, uh, at the industry with Mattel, uh, came up with the idea for the handheld electronic game. So uh, the Mattel football and all the games that you may remember from the 70s. Uh, he went on from there uh, to work at Coleco uh, during the ColecoVision and uh, then went to uh, Epix, uh, the software company, and then to Atari Corporation for the relaunch of the Atari 7800, if you've heard of that, and then moved on, actually moved on to Sega for the launch of the Genesis. Uh, looks like Ted's back. Let me just try him one more time. Okay, we lost you there for a second. Yeah, I'm trying to hide all line or something. I don't know. Okay, anyway. Yes, you were saying. Well, what what, what, what uh, <laughs> You were talking about how you guys quit nutting then, and we're basically uh, going to start uh, keep Syzygy going on your own, and I'm assuming at some point then it got renamed to Atari. Uh, in yeah, uh, that, that's what I was saying, I think, when I got cut off, is that uh, we had submitted the to the Secretary of State for a corporation. He said we couldn't because I was already taken. So we submitted the three names, Atari, uh, Sente, and Hane, which are three GO terms. We submitted that to the Secretary of State. He actually picked, or whoever in his office picked Atari. Okay. Did you get that? Yeah, we got that. Yeah. So then, uh, at some point during that time, uh, Al Alcorn, who had also been at Ampex as an intern, uh, joined up with you guys, and you gave him a project. Yes. So that project, the, the project was okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Al Alcorn had come to work for us because he couldn't get back home with Ampex. Ampex was having trouble by that time, and. Uh, uh, so Al had graduated uh, from UC Berkeley and uh, and couldn't get back on Antex, so we hired him. But we had to pay him because he needed, you know, he had rent to pay and things like that. Noah and I were living off the, the quarters out of the machines, you know, so we were doing okay. So to and explain, got, and to explain that for the people, you guys actually had a coin route, a route with different coin ops at different locations. Yeah, didn't you get that when we bought that from the, that salesman in Austin? When you got hired from Nutty? That's when we lost you. Uh, was when you were starting. Oh, uh, okay. So you can. Yeah, you keep. You keep breaking up. <laughs> well, just tell me if you can. Yeah, your audience. Uh, I didn't hear all of what you just said. Uh, you said, just, please tell me. Yeah. Please tell me if, you, if there's anything you can't hear at any time, and I'll, I'll restate it. Okay, okay. Can you see me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can see you just fine. Okay. okay. You know, hear me, I'll just go like that. Okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> because when you're talking, it's hard to talk over you. You know what I mean? No problem, no problem. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, where did I leave off? <laughs> We were t you were talking about how uh, Al came on board with you guys and you gave him a project? Oh, yeah, right. R right, and we had to pay him, and we and Norman had hired his, uh, his babysitter as a receptionist, the uh, city of Villanueva. And uh, so we had the contract with Bally, but uh, Al didn't know anything about 
you know, what we were doing because he hadn't been a part of it at all. So Nolan gave him an exercise uh, to learn how to use this motion trick at the right time. And uh, so he basically just took the, the circuit from the uh, computer space and we breadboarded that. And trying to figure out what to do with it. Well, by that time, Odyssey had come out. And it was a ping pong game, pretty simple. So the moments would be just, you know, use that as an exercise. So he did. And uh, probably in about three or four weeks, he had this thing working. I mean, I was a hell of an engineer. <laughs> he was really good. And uh, he had this thing working, and we brought it in, and we started playing this thing, and that was so much fun. But no one had always wanted a driving game. That was his whole plan, was to come up with a driving game. But this, this game was so much fun, we said, we should go with this. And uh, there, there were a lot of rumors about no one stealing this from uh, Ralph Bear, he didn't steal from Ralph Bear. He didn't want anything to do with that. He, he, he wanted a driving gig. You know, you got to go with what you got. And it was just too good to let go. So uh, we, we built the, the game, we built the prototype, had it working, and uh, we put it in a small cabinet and set the cabinet on a barrel and put it in a place called Handicaps. And uh, it was in there just, you know, a short time and had a massive failure. And they called uh, Al, Al went in there to find out what the failure was. The failure was a coin mechanism had jammed up because there was too many quarters in it. <laughs> and that was, that was the fix, they sent to the quarters. So uh, then uh, we said, well, that's been awfully good. So we kept trying to get Bally, you know, excited about it. And we, they wouldn't do it. They, they kept putting us off, putting us off. So uh, Nolan and I decided we're going to build 12 games on the phone. Just so we shopped around and got some cabinets and some PC boards and, and like that. And uh, we had enough money coming in to pay for that stuff. So uh, we put these uh, 10 of these games out. Uh, in on locations, you know, basically the same locations that we had gotten from Austin. And uh, sent one to Bally and kept them in the shop, you know, in, in our office. And uh, kept waiting for, you know, Bally to do something. Bally kept not doing anything. In the meantime, these, these machines were making a lot of money. They were making a lot of money. And Mom and I were really pleased because that's what we were living on. We put too money in the machines, but. And uh, all of a sudden, we were, we were doing pretty good. And uh, so we decided we better put together an income report for this, this for Bally, to let him know that this machine was. So we did, and I looked at the numbers, and I, you know, no way I was going to believe that. You know, so let's cut them in half. It was still too hot. I said, okay, let's just, let's just cut them all in one third. And we went, no one said, well, there's a couple of machines not doing real good. Maybe we're going to cut them. I said, we cut them all exactly the same. So when you lie, you remember what your lie is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that kind of thing. So, uh, we did. We, we cut them all down to one third of what they actually made, submitted that to Bally. They still thought we could have cooked the numbers. Unbelievable. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I, you know, we're sitting around the, the office and uh, Nolan and Al and me and uh, we're just sitting there, get, you know, we're kind of looking dumb at each other because we didn't know what to do because Bally owned, it wasn't ours, they had paid for $24,000. Uh, the pinball machine uh, is something that I worked on. It, you know, I always doing the palm so I was just it was a two-level pinball machine. And I was designing that, and uh, wasn't doing a real good job of it, but it was working. It was starting to come together. And uh, uh, so, now where was that going? All this. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry, my mind just dropped into the. <laughs> no problem. You were talking about Bally, how you were going to get it out of the contract with them. Oh, 
asked about it. Yeah, we were sitting around the office, and uh, we were looking at each other, trying to figure out what to do, and there's no way. Yeah, and like, I said, we've got a decision. We either got to build over ourselves, or we got to go home. There's nothing else we can do. It's not our game. We can't do something with it. And nobody wanted to go home. But, you know, Al said, we can't afford to build those ourselves. You know, we can't go into production. We just haven't got the money. It takes a lot of money. Because he, he started going through the numbers, going through the numbers, going through the numbers. And uh, no one was pretty much in, in sync with Al. And I said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. What we need to do is make a decision. Either we go home or we go into production. Once we make the decision, let's figure out how to do it. Okay, let's go to production, Al said. <laughs> I said, okay, let's do that. I said, you take care of the PC boards and uh, the ICs, and I'll take care of the cabinets and the TV set. Uh, what that's going to cost? I said, I don't know. Let's do it and find out. <laughs> so uh, I found a guy in San Francisco selling his hockey's. And so I bought 50 of them from him. Uh, I used my own money because the company didn't have any money at that time. But uh, so I used my own money to buy the TV set. And then I called up P.S. Hurlbut, who had built cabinets for netting. And I talked to Frank, who was a boss guy or owner. I don't even know what the hell he was, but he, he ran the place. So I talked to Frank, and I said, uh, I had originally, you know, those 12 that we had before, I had given him a drawing of the cabinet that I wanted. And he so he came back with a price, but we, in the meantime, we priced it for somebody else that came back a little bit cheaper, and we went with a little bit cheaper, because we had to keep things as cheap as we could. So, Frank had the drawing for the cabinets I wanted, and I said, you remember that cabinet I should have been on? He said, yeah, I said, I need 50 of those. I said, but I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to pay you. He said, you can pick them up in two weeks. I said, we don't have a truck. He said, I'll deliver. <laughs> I mean, that was the conversation. <laughs> so I got the challenge, got the TV set, and uh, Al found a guy right across in the same complex where we were that built PC boards, and he got the PC board. And uh, no one got the IC to uh, Framer and, and uh, Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton, I guess it was the name of the company. So he got the IC, and I got the PC boards, I got the TV sets, and the cabinets, and guess what? We were in business. So we were there, you know, building these, so we had a 1700 square feet, it was really, really small. And, uh, so no one's sitting back watching all this stuff going on just like this. I said, no one, what the hell are you doing there? I said, you got to sell these things. Oh, man, he all of a sudden, he turned white. He turned absolutely white. And uh, he went, went back to his office. He came back about an hour, hour and a half later. He had the dumbest look on his face. I said, well, How'd you do? He said, I made three phone calls and told 300. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you got a kid. Who'd you talk to? He said, well, I heard Pim Giver going to uh, Bob Portal. Who, who I, yeah, I knew he was a big, big time operator down in the LA area. So, you know, that, we did that. And all of a sudden, we decided we'd better get some more. In the meantime, we shipped the fit. I, I drove them in a truck down to Bach Hotel to the first bunch, and we got money. Well, now we had money. We just, you know, we, we had to build 100 more. And uh, we didn't have enough room to build 100 more, not 1,700 square feet. So it just turned out the night before, the guy in the build, in the unit right next to us had moved out. Had snuck out without paying his rent. And uh, uh, I took the saber saw, cut all in, and went into his shop, and then doubled it for feet. <laughs> so 
Well, that was, that was it. We were higher than anybody. Anybody if they, if they could walk in, uh, I hired. I hired more than you tried. Good work. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so that, 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 was, that, that was pretty good. We were, we were really chugging along. I mean, uh, to really dumb things, no, no one. I know he has the money thing. I don't know what it is about him, but some guy showed up from Denver or LA or San Diego or some damn place in his limousine and gave no one a whole lot of money to deliver the machine. I said, no, he didn't take that damn money. Did you get oh, yeah. I said, you can't do that. I mean, you know, we have customers who said, well, he's got to order. But he decided he's going to take this money because he liked this money. It's pretty good. You know, that's something like $25, $27,000. I don't know how much it was. Anyway, that's, that's how that, you know, I was talking about the number of things that he did. But he did more smart things than he did them in terms of his uh, uh, creativity. So I shouldn't bad mouth it too much. Well, it wasn't for him, you guys wouldn't be interested in me, that's for sure. <laughs> that, that's true. So... <laughs> she didn't have to say that. <laughs> you know, I'm just teasing you. Uh, so, how long into it uh, did your relationship change as far as when your time with Atari uh, actually came to an end? And if you could explain to everybody how that came to an end. Well, that, that's kind of complicated. <laughs> I know when it started. Well, in the meantime, Nolan and I had found this 10,000 square foot uh, roller rink and we had moved into that and gone there. And, uh, but it was, to, well, we were run out of room. And uh, so we decided to go out looking for a building. So uh, Nolan heard about this building, some real estate person talking about this building, and I'm all cast, and I'm all cabin building. And so we went out that 30,000 square foot building. Oh, it's a nice looking building. And we're sitting there looking in the windows and that kind of stuff. And I said, that looks pretty good. Probably need that. And Nolan said, I don't think we can justify moving out this far. And, uh, you know, away from Philip and Valley out in Mark Gaddis. And I said, wait a minute, we own the company. I said, look, we aren't justified. Can you hear me, Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We're running a little yeah. late for the other speech. Uh, Sorry, the call let the guy know that we were running late. No problem. Oh, oh okay. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, so I, you know, I, I, no, he said we couldn't justify moving out so far from Silicon Valley, you know, God and Los Angeles, and I said, no, I mean, we're in the damn business. We don't have to justify anything to anybody. That's what got him. Okay. When he realized we actually owned this business that was successful, because all the way back to the uh, roller rink, he said, total slime. That's not quite normal. Total slime. As he drove into the parking lot, he looked at all these cars, and it was full of cars, you know, people at work for it. And no one said, all these people really depend on this, don't they? I said, not only them, the landlords, the grocers, everybody, you know, de depends on us. I mean, that's where, where everything they have comes from. He says, what's it going to be like to be really, really rich? And I said, no one, I hate to tell you this, but your relationship with money is always the same. The only thing that's going to change is numbers. He didn't like that. <laughs> but anyway, that's when that's when the whole thing started collapsing, is once he realized that he owned a business that was very successful. Now, his ego was so blown out of proportion that he started doing really stupid things. He hired a guy. See, he has to thing about money. And if somebody is really rich, then they're really successful and they're really good. So he hired, he knew this uh, industrial psychologist 
but was very rich. So we hired him as a, as a company. We hired a guy with a master's degree in electronics as vice president engineer. We hired a salesman from Kramer Electronics as vice president of marketing. Well, the salesman didn't know what marketing was all about. No one didn't know what marketing was all about. This industrial psychologist, psychologist didn't know what business was all about. And the engineer that was hired couldn't make a decision. And I knew that because I had worked with him at Ampex. And uh, he, he has what's called a PhD mentality. Uh, and that's not really fair to PhDs, I know a lot of really smart PhDs, but PhDs are so smart that no matter what decision they make, they can find something wrong with it, if you, if you follow what I'm saying. So, making a decision, well that's the way this guy was. Did, 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 did you follow that? Yeah, yeah, we've got that. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I know, all of a sudden you go glad and I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just listening to every word. Oh, okay, okay. So anyway, uh, obviously these guys were a bunch of yellows, and, uh, <laughs> but, they, but they knew that my position in the company was really affecting how much they could participate. So they convinced no one it would be a good idea to get rid of me. So he set me up with some lies about key games and that kind of crap and everything and used that as an excuse to get rid of me. And, you know, I wound up with all the, the street operations, but I had to pay it for, you know, you know, I, I had to pay salary, I had to pay rent, I had to pay, you know, I, all the business things and the company just wasn't big enough to be able to support all that. So uh, I had to let it go. I, 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 can't, I can't do it. You know, you, all of a sudden, I get this bill, you know, for twelve thousand dollars from a child, and I got I can't afford it. I, you know, I just let him walk away. And uh, you know, many months later, you know, by this time, a child is really going into the toilet. And it was pretty obvious uh, because when they bought me out, they had to add a lot of uh, value to the pat or the motion circuitry that I'd done just to be able to, I needed because the charge was kept going down and down and down in value. So uh, uh, I, I got a hold of wrong one time. I found out they, they had hot, fired a guy named, uh, I don't remember his name now, but anyway, they had hired, fired a guy that I thought was really a hard-working, no-nonsense, brilliant kind of guy. And they fired And so I went over to uh, uh, the Kennedy building, got a hold of no one, and I said, you, you and I got to have lunch. Come on, you know, we hopped on a motorcycle, we over to the pizza parlor. And I said, your company's going to hell, and you know it. He says, what's wrong with you? No. I said, you got a president, can't do anything except decorate his office. You got a, 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 a vice president of engineering, you can't make a decision. When, when I told him that, he didn't even know I knew this. <laughs> and I said, you got a salesman that doesn't even know how to spell marketing, much less be a marketeer. And, uh, I said, you've got to get rid of these people. He said, but these are my friends. Now, how do I do that? I said, you're a damn. I said, you're trying to run a company. You know, you got to either pick your friends or pick your company, one of the two. And if you want your company, you got to get rid of these guys because they're bad actors. He did that. He got rid of them. And that's when he brought in Joe Keenan. And Joe Keenan, I mean, it was a good company. It was just being run. You know, it wasn't being run at all, but it was. Joe Keeney came in there and started running that company, and man, wow, it, it just started taking off like crazy. So anyway, that was basically how I had to go, it's because I was, uh, uh, I, I was affecting how much 
uh, participation these Yahoo's could have in the company if I was still there, because I own so much of it. That, that's why they had to bring me. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We're going to take a few questions from the audience then, and, and if you can't hear it, oh, okay. if you can't hear it, I'll just repeat it. Okay. So. Questions from the audience. Let me uh, kind of get over to you here. What's your opinion on the uh, direction the gaming industry is taking today? Uh, the question was, what's your opinion on how you've seen the game industry, uh, the direction it's taken today? Oh, I think it's fantastic. I think it's outrageous. Uh, you know, I mean, Nintendo and all these companies coming up, I mean, they just, they just overshadowed it from what I can see, you know, in terms of uh, video games, especially the home market. You know, but that's... But, but I'm not a game player, so I don't really know, you know, very much about it, other than, you know, watching, uh, you know, some of the things that I see, you know, about how well uh, these other, you know, Asian companies are doing. Okay. Uh, one more question, then. <laughs> one more question. Anyone? Anybody else? Okay, looks like you covered everything for those. No more questions. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ted, thank you so, so much for doing this. We greatly appreciate you uh, talking to everybody here. Oh, I, 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 I'm still blown away that they're so interested in the, the Atari and Pong and computer space and you know, all that kind of stuff. It's so that's very exciting to me. Well, especially you, now that you're more in the, in the public eye, uh, people are very interested in what you have to say and very interested in, in your experiences because you were there in the beginning. So we really, yeah. really yeah. appreciate this. Uh, why does everybody give a yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to let you go, then i got to go on to the next speech. But thank you very much, and I'll catch up with you later in the weekend. Okay, great. Take care now. Take care, Marty. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going to go.